All right, so now let's say a, a little bit more about uh, algebraic stability and how it connects to the other notions of stability which we studied, uh, including A stability and uh, linear stability. So algebraic stability. Sort of versus A stability. And linear stability. Okay. So, um, so you could ask, um, you know, sort of an obvious question, which is, um, you know, which kind of Runge-Kutta methods uh, are algebraically stable, uh, and in particular, um, you know, um, is it possible for an explicit method to be algebraic stable? Okay. So let's consider uh, explicit Runge-Kutta methods. Okay, and then uh, if you recall, it's like the issue of algebraic stability has to do with whether or not uh, this uh, sort of special matrix um, which whose coefficients are uh, constructed, it's like from the coefficients of the Runge-Kutta method, um, whether that matrix is uh, positive semi-definite, okay? So, um, so recall that uh, the uh, sort of famous matrix, if you will, M has coefficients which are given by um, MKL is equal to BK AKL plus BL ALK, right, minus uh, BK BL. All right, and so let's, let's try to uh, say a little bit about uh, this matrix M uh, in the case of explicit Runge-Kutta methods. Uh, so with an explicit Runge-Kutta method, of course, you know that the A matrix is strictly lower triangular, okay? Um, and, and so let's just see what happens uh, along the diagonal. So if it's strictly low triangular, then you know that uh, um, M, this M matrix along the diagonal will have A entries, it's like, uh, which vanish, right? Because, um, well, let's just write that. MKK is of course just BK, AKK plus BK, AKK minus BK squared. Right, AKK uh, is zero because uh, the matrix A is strictly lower triangular and in particular the diagonal vanishes. So these two entries vanish and you're just left with minus BK squared. Okay, and then the other thing it's like uh, you know is that for uh, issues of consistency, uh, it's necessary that the sum of the, uh, of the BI coefficients, it's like is equal to one, right? So, uh, so for consistency of the uh, RK method, right, you have that the sum over K of BK is equal to one, okay? So, um, so these two conditions together, if you will, it's like then mean that, uh, um, then sort of guarantee that um, your um, <coughs> yeah, your your Runge-Kutta it's like uh, sorry the M matrix it's like cannot be uh, positive semi-definite, right? So together, sort of this implies that uh, M is not positive semi-definite. Okay which basically means that explicit RK methods uh, can be algebraically stable, okay? So explicit RK methods are not algebraically stable. Okay, all right. Um, Okay, so that's one observation. Um, and of course, 
if you recall, but there's another way to see that um, explicit RK methods uh, cannot be uh, algebraically stable. Um, and, and the way you see that, if you will, is, is the observation that when we discuss this idea of algebraic stability, um, it really came from this idea of monotonicity. It's like um, sort of monotone equations, right? Um, and you know, it's like when we studied monotone equations, the goal was to generalize the idea of linear differential equations, it's like which had these decaying solutions. Um, and so, um, if you will, um, a special case of a monotone equation is um, a, a linear um, scalar equation, okay? So a special case of a monotone equation is uh, it's just basically, um, is basically just, um, um, let's say y dot is equal to lambda y, uh, where uh, the real part of lambda is less than zero. Okay, and and of course it's like this is what we use. It's like to do uh, linear stability analysis. Okay. All right, and in particular a stability. Okay, so um, so basically this implies that. Uh, that uh, sort of a stability is a necessary condition uh, for algebraic stability. Another way of saying this is that uh, a stabil or algebraic stability implies a stability, uh, but the converse may not necessarily be true. Okay, uh, so we want to show now that uh, this notion of algebraic stability is a stronger condition than a stability, uh, and uh, you know it's like in some sense that may not be too surprising because again the notion of algebraic stability uh, applies. It's like uh, to some sort of notion of nonlinear equations as well, uh, whereas the notion of a stability is, is sort of a linear stability analysis. Okay, but let's just uh, try to be sort of more explicit about this. Okay. And I guess I, I should have mentioned that uh, we, we showed it's like uh, earlier that it's not possible for explicit uh, Rogakuda methods to be A-stable, right? So, um, so you can deduce that a uh, explicit Rogakuda method is not algebraically stable because in particular, it's not uh, A-stable, okay? All right, um, okay, so let's consider now uh, a proof that in some sense the notion of Algebraic stability and stability uh, has a gap. So let's consider um, a sort of three stage RK method. Okay, um, as follows. Let's see if this is better. Okay, so there's uh, zero, one half, and one. 0, 0, 0, 5 over 24, 1 third, negative 1 over 24, uh, 1 6, 2 thirds, 1 6, and then 1 6, 2 thirds, 1 6. So there's some things you can show about this, right? So you can show that this method is order four. And you can also show that it's a stable. I right? can show it is uh, a stable. All right, um, but let's just try to check then that it's not algebraically stable. Okay, all right, so these are in some sense exercises uh, which are left to the reader. 
Okay, uh, so let's consider the M matrix associate this. So you can easily check that the M matrix looks like the following, 1 over 36 multiplied into negative 1, 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1. Uh, and then this is not uh, positive semi-definite, okay? It's not positive semi-definite. Uh, which basically means is that it is not algebraically stable. Okay, so, so again, this is an example of a Runge-Kutta method, three-stage, four-fold Runge-Kutta method, uh, which is A-stable, but which is not algebraically stable. Okay. Um, so you might ask, well, it's like under what conditions... Uh, um, can we then show that, uh, you know, you have uh, A-stability, okay? So, um, um, and, and one particularly sort of easy case to work with, if you will, is, um, is when the, um, this sort of famous M matrix is just identically zero, okay? So if the, the M matrix is identically zero, then obviously it is positive semi-definite. Um, so, so let's look at conditions um, which then allow you to say something about when this M matrix is uh, identically zero. Okay? All right. Um, okay, so if you're given a RK method, okay, and you just write down a bit of tableau for this, uh, C, A, B transpose, right, we say that uh, this RK method is, uh, let's call it B of R, okay, if the following is true, so there are certain conditions, it's like on the coefficients of the Runge-Kutta matrix which are satisfied, uh, so that the sum from i equals to 1 to s of bi ci to the k minus 1 is equal to 1 over k. Okay, uh, and you want this to be true for k equals to 1 to r, all right? Okay, and we say that this RK method and is CR if uh, the con this other condition holds, which has to involve the AIJs. So AIJ CJ to the K minus 1, again J equals 1 to S, right, is equal to CI to the K over K. Okay, and this is for i equals to 1 to s, okay, and for k equals to 1 to uh, r. Okay, all right. Um, so, yeah, okay, um, and, and we're going to show, it's like uh, in a little bit um, where this shows up. Um, so maybe I should write this condition to the side here. Okay, so this is BR if uh, the sum from I equals 1 to S of BI CI to the K minus 1 is equal to 1 over K. So K equals 1 to R. And then it's CR if the sum from J equals 1 to S of uh, AIJ CI to the K minus 1 is equal to CI to the K over K i equals 1 to s, and then uh, k equals 1 to r. So uh, so let me at least give you some intuition for what this condition is sort of saying, all right? So if you recall, it's like when we discussed um, the derivation of Runge-Kutta methods, uh, I sort of appealed to this idea that uh, you want to think of this as being um, sort of an application of the fundamental theorem of calculus 
right, which tells you what the solution at the current time is in terms of the solution at the previous time, plus the integral of the vector field along some solution trajectory. Okay, um, and and so the way to sort of think about this is that then you can interpret this. Uh, the B coefficients, right, as the integral from zero to one of some function. Uh, and so when you see this, it's like, this is more or less telling you that the quadrature approximation of the integral of x to the, or t to the k minus one, right, is, uh, is the correct value. And then this is saying that the integral, um, so, and then the AIJs, it's like are again quadrature approximations, um, but now it's like instead of the interval from zero to one, which uh, correspond to the BI coefficients, right, they are um, quadrature approximations of uh, zero to CI, right? So these AIJs, it's like each of these um, rows, if you will, is a quadrature approximation of the integral from zero to CI. And, and this is again an integral from uh, zero to CI of uh, t to the k minus one, and then that's the answer which you get. Okay, so um, yeah, so so basically again, it's like this is more or less saying that these uh, coefficients viewed as quadrature rules give you the exact answer for all polynomials uh, up to a certain degree. Okay, so that's that's the interpretation I'd like you to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, we're, we're not really going to use that. It's like uh, in the next proof, it's like, but it will show up in the result after that. Okay. Okay, so let's see now. So let's uh, prove the following lemma, okay. Okay, so if uh, these uh, C1 to CS are distinct, okay, so if C1 to CS are distinct, okay, and uh, a runge kuda method is both uh, B, uh, 2s, right? So again, it's like this is telling you something about uh, whether or not B, the BIs uh, viewed as a quadrature approximation of the integral from 0 to 1, it's like give you exact results for polynomials of degree uh, less than or equal to 2s uh, minus 1, right? Okay, so that's what B2s is saying. Okay, and uh, and again, uh, CS. So CS is sort of the same idea. It's whether or not these AIJ coefficients, right, uh, viewed as uh, quadrature weights, it's like um, give you uh, good approximations, well, exact approximations of the integrals uh, of polynomials from degree zero up to degree uh, S minus one uh, from the interval from zero to CI, okay? So that's the second condition here. Okay, so if this, both these things are true, then, uh, this M matrix is identically zero, okay? And as I said, if the M matrix is identically zero, it is trivially positive semi-definite, and so uh, the corresponding RK method would be uh, algebraically stable, okay? So we're then, okay, so this is the zero matrix, okay? All right, so that's basically uh, the lemma. So let's try to prove this again using uh, those two conditions uh, we have before. Okay, so first uh, let's make an observation. And here we use the fact that uh, C1 to CS are distinct. Uh, so associated it's like with these uh, points then are uh, what is called the uh, Van der Monde uh, matrix. Okay, so, uh, So let's call that matrix V, right, uh, which has has coefficients or has entries uh, which are given by uh, VKL is equal to CIK um, to the minus 1, okay? 
Okay, so the way to think about these entries of the Vendermann the matrix then are that they're essentially um, evaluating the function or basically all the monomials, right? Um, you know, it's like t to some power, right? t to the k minus one um, at um, each of the, um, the points c1 to cs, right? So that's basically what that matrix is doing, okay, or at least what those matrix entries are. So, so let's see now um, uh, what you can do with that. So the first observation, it's like with this matrix, is that it is uh, invertible. Okay, so this is non-singular. So this matrix is non-singular. So what I can use it for then is to uh, do a similarity transform um, of the uh, famous M matrix. Okay. So if it's non-singular, this basically means that, uh, so this means that, that uh, m is equal to zero if and only if, right, uh, m tilde, which I define to be um, sort of m, well, sort of v transpose m v, Right um, is um, is is uh, zero. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, and then we're going to show that uh, this is uh, this is indeed the case. It's like that m tilde is zero. Um, so okay. So v transpose m v, which is what I call m tilde, is actually zero. Okay. All right, uh, so um, so let's look at the coefficients. It's like of the m tilde matrix. Okay, so m tilde k l. So the k l coefficient of the m tilde matrix uh, is given by. Okay, so it's this product. So let's just uh, and then these are the entries of that matrix V. Um, so you can check that this is equal to sum from i equals to one to s. The sum from j equals 1 to s of uh, ci to the k minus 1, uh, mij, okay, cl minus 1, j here. Okay, all right. Okay, so, um, and then you can check that this is equal to, and then we have to substitute the expression for what mij is. Um, so this is equal to the sum from, again, i equals 1 to s, sum from j equals 1 to s of c i to the k minus 1, uh, b i a i j, right, plus b j a j i minus b i b j multiplied into uh, c j l minus 1. All right. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, so that's equal to, um, so I'm going to sort of take some of the terms out. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up into two parts. I'm gonna sum over i first, i equals one to s, and then b i c i k minus one, right? So these are just dependent on i, I can leave them like that. Uh, and I can uh, sum from j equals one to s again, a i j uh, c j l minus one. So these terms, of course, depend on j as well. So I'm going to do this first. Um, and the reason, of course, why I've written it this way is because this term looks like something which shows up in the condition C R. Okay. All right. So uh, so I'll do something similar for the rest of the entries. This is a sum from j equals to one to s. Right. B j c j to the l minus one and then i guess i should have said that this condition uh, shows up here and then this condition of course shows up in the br terms right uh, so something similar happens here sum over um okay i equals one to s of a j i okay c i to the k minus one Right, uh, and then I'm going to do something similar here. It's like with the bi 
uh, bj cj to the l minus one term. Uh, yeah, so bi bj ci to the k minus one, cj to the l minus one, right? So there's another term which looks like, uh, well, minus uh, the sum from i equals one to s, bi ci to the k minus one, sum from j equals one to s of bj cj to the l minus one. Okay, all right, so, uh, so it should be easy to see that uh, I've written this uh, MKL tilde entries, it's like in terms of things, uh, you know, basically the product of things which show up uh, in these conditions here. Okay, so, uh, so let's keep going. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so, right. Okay, so I'm just going to condense these first, okay? I'm just going to do one at a time. So this is, uh, so M tilde KL is equal to uh, 1 over L, right? So I'm just applying these uh, things involving the Bs first because they're easier to work with, right? So sum from i equals 1 to s of b i c to the i to the k minus l plus 1. Okay. Um, plus 1 over k, the sum from j equals 1 to s. Bj, uh, Cj to the k plus l minus one, uh, minus one over kl. All right, um, all right. So this is so these two I can add together. That's uh, one over l plus one over k multiplied into one over k plus l uh, minus one over kl. Okay. Um, of course, that is uh, equal to uh, sort of KL over uh, or K plus L over K times L over, well, all right. So it's K plus L over KL times 1 over K plus L uh, minus 1 over KL. So that's equal to zero, right? So every entry of the M tilde matrix is zero. Uh, so, um, and because of the fact that it is the similarity transformation of this famous M matrix uh, by an invertible matrix, right? Uh, it has to be that uh, the famous M matrix itself is zero as well, okay? So, um, right, so let me just uh, stop here for now and then we'll show in a little bit uh, that the Gauss-Legendre uh, methods are algebraically stable, okay?